Today we're going to check out a new powerful AI video upscaler called Starlight. It's by Topaz Labs and part of the Video AI package. It's the first diffusion-based video upscaler, which means it uses technology similar to AI image upscalers or AI art to produce a crisp image. Now I'm gonna test a few different scenarios here, but I've got this VHS footage I found on pexels.com that I think would make a good start. So I then drag and drop my video into Topaz Video AI. I click Start Editing, head up the top right to Try Starlight. And you have the option for a 1080p render or a 4K render. As you can see, it's processed privately in the cloud. So I'm gonna stick with 1080p and select my range. I can trim my video here. I'll choose when it ends and then bring it forward to choose when the video actually starts. When I'm done, I hit send to cloud and it will upscale that video using Starlight on the cloud. Now due to the processing power, this is done in the cloud. So it does require some paid credits. But there are also some locally processed video upscalers which have no credit system and I'll cover them later in the video. And when the processing is finished, you can come over to the right to download the video and it will save it into the same folder as the source video you upscaled. And straight away you can see this is a lot sharper and a massive upgrade to the image quality. But it's a bit hard to tell without seeing it side by side, so I've placed them both side by side. And you can see here, the original video on the left is incredibly fuzzy, while the one on the right sharpens up quite well. Now we'll zoom in a little bit, it's not perfect, but it is still a massive, massive upgrade. Especially looking at the text on his shirt, it's a massive difference. So I tested it out with some old cartoons, like this Popeye cartoon, to see what kind of results I could get. And I think you'll agree it's both sharper and much clearer than before. Now I got this one off archive.org, but you may notice there's still a few little imperfections simply due to what we're working with. So it's not always gonna be perfect, but the technology as far as the first step is still very impressive. To further show you what I mean, I have this old 1940s Superman clip. And you can see here that the one on the right is definitely far more watchable. But in areas where there are lots of movement, it doesn't have a lot of information to work with. So it does its best, but it still creates little imperfections. And you can see those artifacts right here if you take a close look. But this is not a complaint. Consider how clear Lois looks in this scene. And you can see it's still a massive improvement. So I moved on to this really grainy footage I found on pexels.com. And you can see straight away, I haven't even upscaled this footage. This footage was already at 1080p and it's just cleaned it up and done an amazing job. So then I found one of my favorite interviews and upscaled it to 1080p. Now I was totally blown away by this because it totally changes the image quality and makes it something far more watchable, but it's still not perfect. Notice how we get rid of that glow and everything sharpens up. Looks like a new shoot. But overall, I love the way it has added more detail to the hair, the eyebrows, and even sharpened up some of the facial features. But still a few areas where it doesn't look quite right, a little bit smooth. It also gets these little fangs uh, and his teeth every now and then that seem to sharp and disappear. And finally, I tried some low resolution AI videos like this one from Leonardo AI. Now, because it's already a pretty smooth render, the upscale just kind of smooths it out, but at least it looks a bit sharper. But what about the 4K upscale? Again, simply add your video in there, head up to Try Starlight, and you can choose the 4K render, and it's the same process as before. A few simple clicks, and it goes into the cloud. And I'm able to turn this AI video into 4K pretty easily. It looks pretty good. I took this video, which I actually rendered recently in a video, blew it up to 4K, and this is how it looks. You can see, it's like a sharper, higher production cartoon. Now side by side, you can see the difference, but I need to zoom in even further because this video is higher resolution than the video you're currently watching on YouTube. And that's a massive level of enhancement. And one more example of a powerful anime upscale from an AI art platform is this one here to 4K. And again, it looks like a complete proper production from an anime studio. And you can really see it here in the face. So I decided to start increasing the photorealism to investigate more with this video from Design AI I did. This one I did a while ago and you can see big difference in the results there. And also this other video made in Kling where the woman's face gets upscaled and a lot of the detail, even the reflection in her eyes, very, very well done and a great use of this tool playing to its strengths. But now switching to some real footage, which is some old phone footage of my old dog I had years ago, and it's actually removed the grain and cleaned it up a pretty fair amount. So I slowed this footage down so you can see there's a better consistency when it comes to the noise and the color in the fur. So a few key takeaways are that you can get some pretty amazing results with this software. Now, the input you have does affect the ability of the software to effectively upscale it. So it's not gonna be perfect every time. 
Upscaling already decent quality videos to much higher resolution is definitely more effective than taking very old videos, very low resolution videos, and turning them into larger resolution videos. So while you can get some pretty amazing results and drastically improve this footage, it's not gonna be perfect. But I still recommend it because it does a pretty amazing job anyway especially since this is the first version of a diffusion video model and it will only get better from here. But it's easy to go beyond just using starlight for this particular process. As you can see, this is footage here. It hasn't been upscaled and it's a bit shaky. So what we can do is go in and stabilize it. So this time I drag the video in and on the menu here, it says auto crop stabilization. So I click on that and on the right here, stabilization has been turned on. And I can play with a few settings such as there's a method, there is auto crop. I can choose motion de-blur if I want to sort of get some of the motion de-blur out of there so we don't get that weird sort of jitteriness. And I can apply certain corrections automatically. And from there, I can export my original video and it will actually stabilize it. And I can then use that to upload to Starlight. Then we get this much smoother footage. Hasn't been upscaled, but seems a little less jittery to watch. So now we can take that, go to Starlight and run it as a 4K render and then we get this footage, which has been upscaled to 4K. Because it's been upscaled to 4K on this 1080p YouTube video, I can zoom in and we can see a much smoother video also upscaled using Starlight. This can work quite well for really old videos like this footage from Australia Zoo. Now I use the auto crop stabilized to get a much smoother picture here. And then I bring it into Starlight and I then upscale that video into 1080p, improving the resolution and making it a lot more watchable. Or well, you can do things the other way around, such as this video of Mario, I have upscaled using Starlight, get in nice and close and take a close look, but things go by just a little too fast. So by heading down in Topaz Video AI and going to frame interpolation, for one, I can increase the frame rate, but two, I can make this video slow motion and it'll actually produce frames in between each frame using AI to create a smooth slow motion video. I adjust a few settings which I think will work best I export, and this is rendered entirely on my device. Now you can see our video is going much slower. So this is a really, really powerful tool if you wanna grab some of your AI videos and make them last a little bit longer in slow motion, or even just add slow motion to any video. This is a powerful way to do it, but I recommend using Starlight first, so that way you're not upscaling frames unnecessarily with your credits, because you can upscale with Starlight on the cloud and then Add those frames in using AI afterwards on your device and it'll save you credits and therefore save you a little bit of money when using this process. But this is also very handy if you got some old videos like this one here of me talking where I shot with a camcorder and there's just a little bit of a grainy fuzziness to all of the edges. Starlight can help smooth that out, although I don't recommend it for large chunks of video, but it can be handy if it's an important bit of footage that you can't reshoot. But that's the thing. Do you actually need Starlight to upscale basic footage? because it has a lot of strengths, especially when it comes to animation or 3D, or sometimes certain pieces of live action footage work really well, sometimes they don't, but there are also a bunch of other profiles that you can turn to. Now, as I said before, Starlight processes on the cloud due to the amount of processing power required. But if you want to actually upscale, you can use output resolution here. If I go to original, you'll see it's only 1080p, but you can do a 2X upscale, 4X, set 4K, 8K, or even a custom resolution. But down here, you have a few different profiles such as Proteus, so good for general enhancement, Iris, which is good for faces, Nexus, which is good for dedicated denoising, Rhea, and a few others. So how do they compare? If I'd pop it next to the original or next to Starlight, what do these particular profiles look like when I'm upscaling this footage of me talking? Now, while this is nowhere near as smooth as Starlight, Artemis's sort of denoising and sharpening does an okay job at improving the quality. But moving on to the Iris model, which is made for face upscaling, I think it actually does a more natural job than Starlight. It doesn't overly smooth the image, but still greatly improves it overall, and my face looks a bit better, a bit cleaner in this footage. And the next denoising model makes things larger and a little bit sharper than Iris. A little less organic, but still a little bit sharper if that's what you're after. Proteus here, not too bad. Definitely not the best of the bunch, but still does an okay job. Rhea here, I think though, has the best balance of all things. I would choose between this or Iris if I was upscaling my own talking footage. I think it's the best job uh, between those two. 
But with Thea, we see, I guess, a minor difference. Definitely still not one of my favorites for upscaling faces, but it does an okay job. Moving on to Gaia, I'm surprised that this one looked pretty good. Not as good as Iris or Rhea, but uh, it actually is made for animation, but still did a pretty solid job. But what if we want to test it out on some animation? Now Gaia here does a great job of upscaling this anime style AI video. So I compared it to Starlight, still not as good as Starlight, but definitely a good step in between. Now again with this footage really in somewhere in the middle, though a little less recognizable in difference. And again, compared to Starlight, it's a nice step in between, but still not quite as good. But let's go back to the footage. And then we come back to Rhea, which was the, my favorite of the non-diffusion upscalers. And in this instance, I think it's actually produced a more natural result. So I don't think we need Starlight for absolutely everything. But rendering videos can take some time, so if you're going to try and compare whether or not you want to use any one of these profiles or Starlight, just remember you can preview your settings. And there are various settings for each profile which I haven't covered also. So if I have Iris selected for this footage of me, I can go in and render two seconds. I can also hit the drop down and choose a different length of time. And while that takes a moment, I can come up here and go side by side view. I can zoom in. And you can see just from the screenshot that things are much sharper on the right. I can hit play and test that out. But if I head back and I decide I want to try and get something a bit more out of this, I can come over to the settings. I can add some noise or some grain. It looks pretty artificial, but it can be good for certain use cases. But if I crank recover detail right up here, I then render two seconds again. And now I can see it's actually a little bit sharper. I hit play. I think it looks a little too sharp. So that is a great way to experiment with the settings, make sure you're getting what you want. But you also have things like parameters here. So if I want to, I can really ramp up the detail, ramp up the sharpening, I can de-halo, I can anti-elias. And I'm not saying you want to use these settings as I have here. I've just kind of cranked them up so I can show you what kind of impact they have. So once again, I go back to the start, render my two seconds, and you'll see here there's a preview queue. So you can go through and change various settings, go to your preview queue, and you'll see them all lined up here. And so now I can preview again, keeping in mind it will keep playing beyond the preview. So things might suddenly get a bit ugly, but we hit play again and we can see a bit of a difference. And of course, if you're looking at Starlight, you can head up to Starlight. There aren't really any settings, but you do have one of three previews you can use each week. So you can try for free and get a preview that way as well. Now, I've really only scratched the surface of what video AI can do. I recommend Starlight's probably going to be your best bet for most videos, but you can still get pretty good results with the device models that are actually included as well. And often they can sometimes be a little bit better for certain types of footage. Now, you can also queue up videos and walk away, come back, leave it overnight. It's a really, really great tool for anyone looking to upscale videos with AI. I use it a lot for my AI generated videos. I highly recommend you check it out. There's a link in the description if you want to try out Topaz Video AI today. But otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.